Hello everyone, I'm Adam Happy and welcome to another episode of There's a Place, the ASMR talk show. The show that feels good to hear. Uh, I can hear our guest uh, clamoring in the background. He is uh, he's ready to get on. So I won't uh, do too long of a monologue, but something happened to me this morning. I, uh, <laughs> I was, uh, was in a hurry to like, get some food. I go to a uh, close grocery store to me. Is Whole Foods has a spin-off grocery store called 36.5. And it's... Uh, Anyway, they have this grocery store called 365. It's like a cheaper version of Whole Foods. So it sounds awesome, except it's like the hippest grocery store. Every time you go in there, you see some lame person you know. It's like going into a nightclub. It's really not fun. But the food is, is okay. And it's cheap, but it's still Whole Foods. It's still expensive. So I have this like love-hate kind of relationship. So I go in, and the pizza there, you get one slice for... So I get, I get two slices. I very cleverly, you know, put one over the other one. So it looks, you know, like one really thick slice of pizza. So I, I go up to the counter and I'm in line. I'm thinking, you know what? It's only $2. I should just pay for it. This, it's, this is wrong. This is stealing. Even if it is from a big company, they got big by being the best and offering good food. No, it's wrong. Uh, then, then the other side of it was like, Oh, come on, who's going to know? What? No harm, no foul. It's just pizza. So I'm in line. I'm like, no, you know what? I'm going to do the right thing. If they ask me, I'm going to say it's two slices. I'm going to pay the full $5. So like, it's that one slice or two. And immediately I just go, one. And I think to myself, oh, man, I failed myself. I couldn't. Well, next time. So I sit down and feel kind of bad. And, uh, and so I, I sit down. I'm like, ah, you know, that's, I really need to grow up. You know, I need to stop eating pizza, I need to eat healthier. And, and you know, I, sh- I should need to support 365. They're doing a good thing in the community, yada, yada, yada. And then I bit into the pizza, and it was some of the worst pizza I ever had. And so I was like, forget this place. I'm never coming here again. So all that glitters is not gold, is the lesson this week. Well, my guest tonight has been uh, clamoring to get on the show. Uh, he is a show business veteran, a Los Angeles legend. He has been on television. He's made records. He's a great artist. And he's even been to outer space. Please welcome on There's a Place, David Levehart. Dave. David. Hey, hey David. 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 Hey, David. Huh? Come on. I can come on the show now? Yeah. Huh? Yeah, just have a seat. Okay. What'd you have me to say? That's how we're doing an interview. Okay. Oh. Oh, what are you going to talk to me? What am I going to talk to you about? Yeah, what are you going to talk to me about? What are you going to talk about? I don't know. You know this is the show, right? Uh, no, I haven't seen this one. This is the No, episode. we're on it live right now. Oh, we are? Yeah. Wow, hi. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, it's good to see you, Dave. It's good to be here. Shh. It's an ASMR show. Boy, this is library TV. Oh. Yeah, exactly. Shy Y TV. Shy Y? What does that mean? TV. You can't speak loud. It must be in school. <laughs> well, I've, I've been... T- I did Tim and Eric show and check it out with Dr. Steve Brule. I was supposed to the be good on. Times, um, yeah. I'm disappointed. Can I was you, supposed you just to just bring your voice down a little bit. I was supposed to be yeah. on the new Odd Couple, but they think all we blacks look alike, so they gave it to another nigga. Whoa! Uh, another brother. Another brother, yeah. Yeah, but I'm happy for his success. But some some might say that it's good that there's even yeah, parts for black and, actors. And then I read for a new girl. But I wasn't young enough, so they gave it to an old guy. Oh. So, so uh, I'm. But you're auditioning. You're out there. You're. Well, my t- I have I have a I have a very talented talent agent. His name is Jack Scanati. 
very talented. He, he, he reminds me of my Sunday school teacher, El Conicelli, like a cappuccino. He's really funny and good. Wakes me up in the morning. <laughs> well, I've had a kind of a, I, my social life is, is like uh, the drought in California. I might as well be a nun. I'm not getting none. I haven't had a girlfriend in so long. Why do you think that is? Well, girls are so successful. conservative. They just want the, they think they, they, they want Mr. Mr. Perfect instead of Mr. Any, anybody be. Mr. Anybody be. Yeah. So I've had, uh, other than that, I'm still at the, uh, the same old Dick Sproul's apartment. I can't believe I've You've been, been at that place there. for like 25 I, years. I've been living there since 1992. Uh, too, ever since my cousin Phyllis McKinnon. Died. That's in the Koreatown area. How have you seen L.A. change living in that one apartment since 1992? Well, it, well, there was a famous comedian that lived there named James Squall, and he fell in love with a woman that reminded me so much of Elvira from Tiny Toons. She walked like Sibidi Sand, but he don't. I mean, at, I mean, uh, uh, James Squall. James Squall just loved Susan Yerkew like she was Queen Sheba, like she was Marilyn Monroe. He just says ugly could look good for a change. He loves Susan Yerkew. He wish. really does. And and she she he loves him. She loves she loves him so much. Susan Yerkew went on, is out right now on a vacation in the Bahamas. You would think she would have taken James Squall alone, long instead of Herman, but you know, she still. Loves so she her. she went with another man, and James Squall still loves her. He still loves her. You know, the 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 uh, absolutely production Clark Rankers uh, and I put him up to stay in a hotel, and uh, I wish him the best. I don't. Uh, Clark Rankers has more money than I do. He's the producer of the of the uh, all absolutely production. So he's, he's uh, had, he gave more money than I did, but I was sad seeing James Squall on the street. I would give him food and money when I saw him on the street. And, but anyway, I'm, I'm glad he's off the streets in a nice hotel. How are your fish tanks doing? My fish tanks have, I'll tell you, it's weird. I went and I bought uh, some feeder fish. I had, used to have piranhas in my fish tank, and I used to have Oscars in my fish tank. And I go to this Filipino uh, fish store, um, um, and uh, it's on Van Nuys Boulevard in Santa Monica in Hollywood. This guy sold me um, uh, bullhead sharps. And Sorry, I, what? And they bull, they called bullhead sharps. They ate the they when they got big, they ate the piranhas and the Os uh, Oscars up, and now they're in the fish tank. And the only thing they won't eat. And then he sold me some other baby fish to feed the uh, the, um, the, um, the the sharp. This time he sold me electric seals that could be in freshwater. And you know the uh, the uh, the sharps and the uh, and the uh, uh, electric seals must be bisexual because they like fresh water and salt water. They get it on in both types of water. <laughs> they get it on in water. Yeah. I noticed that a lot of your analogies are always about getting it on. Yeah, very I, well, I see, I see, I don't even have to turn on and look at porn because the electric seals and the, uh, and the sharp, they seem to rub up against each other so romantically, you know, but you know, uh, they, they don't want me to see them in the nude because if I move a rail rock or plant seaweed in there, they'll bite my hands or, or splash the water in my face. They're jealous jelly. They don't, they don't want me to, to intrude in their, uh, their, their, their little home there. They splash water in your face? Yes, they do. Like, Get out of here, like they're telling me. Yeah. Oh, sharp or mean. How do you deal with that? I don't know. It's like dealing with women that try to get me in trouble for, for uh, you know, it's terrible writing MTA. You, everybody wants people at MTA uh, that takes the, the, the subway. They feel it's a, uh, they, all he wants you to be is a, vir, is, is a virgin. Yeah, uh, be a nun, you don't get none. You know what, I don't like, they say you can't say a woman looks pretty. You can't, you can't talk to a woman because they say, they consider that a sexual harassment and the sheriff say you get arrested for that. If you see, say something, if you see something, say, say something. You don't even get to speak to a woman. We're supposed to have freedom of speech in America. Where do you think the line is between paying a compliment and harassment? Huh? 
Where do you think the As long as you don't touch the Charmin of the pretty girls, you can still admire them and say they look pretty. The Charmin. The oh, squeeze, squeeze Mr. Whipple? Squeeze touch them. And, now that's sexual harassment. Okay. But say they look pretty. You know, dating's like cooking. You gotta first get to know a girl and talk to her first and, 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 and say she looks pretty and saute the, the fried chicken and the, and, and the grease. And, and then before you can come, you, 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 you gotta come on easy, not greasy. You come on greasy, you don't get. You but you can't away. come at all. You like when you're fishing. If if you, if you're not, uh, use some finesse and come on and pull the fish out too fast, they'll it'll, it'll let go of the bait. Have you ever thought about doing like a dating show, or because I mean you're I successful. I want to be on a dating show, but I want the girls that I want to be. I'm tired of being the coyote and. And the girls being the road runner, I want to get. I want to be. I want to. I want to be the victor, not the victim, and get the girl. That would be. But nice. I'm still trying. I'm an oldie but goodie. You're not one that of these old. These days, um, you know, um, uh, you know, Fo. I knew a lot of famous stars at the Christian Science Church when I first came to the California. Vivian Vance used to let me do gardening and yard work at her two mansions. One she had one in Malibu. She had one up in the Hollywood Hills. And um, and her and uh, she was just a. She told me that the jealous jelly became between her and Lucille Ball because she became more popular than Lucille Ball, and then she was replaced by Mary Jane. That jealous jelly is something else that gets in in the entertainment business. I keep hearing you're uh, you're using this expression, jealous jelly. That's one of my terms, jealous jelly. What are your terms? Critical pickle. You know, people are so critical. I grew up in a cr critical Christian Science Church, and they were critical about everything. If you didn't come in church with a shirt and tie, and you didn't look conservative or Republican, they would consider you being a communist. So they're that critical. They were critical pickles. They were critical pickles. They liked their pickles on their sandwich. How do you come up with these analogies? I just, just, I a like lot of them have to do with food. I like the tease of cheese. I mean, uh, the, the, see, that's another food one. Yeah, I don't know. I, I just love food, I, you know. Um, Today you said the weather was chilly willy willy. Yeah, it was cold outside. Instead chili is the type of food. Yeah, and it's like, you, you, it's so cold in Los Angeles, looks like they're making popsicle people. I'm glad we're not in the Midwest, my God. Everybody's living in the North Pole, in the South, and in the North, and in New York, and Chicago. My goodness, I had to get away from that popsicle making weather. They would go, the oyster girls would like me like a chocolate popsicle. They could, they could eat me up as much as they want. Mm -hmm. You're kind of all over the place there in that yeah. uh, description. Thanks for letting me be on your show. Anytime, it's, it's dude. great. Uh, so I'm... This is kind of a reunion for us. Yeah, we did a lot of work together. Yeah. You know, Phil Scheich finally called me and I hadn't heard from him in years. He says, well, my southern girlfriend ain't with me, so I, 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 I I, I'm getting liberal, liberal. I'm, I'm, I'm getting a free spirit again, and I, I voted for Hillary Clinton. That's what uh, Phil Shy said. And my dad's a strong Republican and a Ku Klux Klan member, but I like chocolate so much till I voted for being your friend again. And we talked for a while, time, and I said, you know, I said that, that you know about the South, the. Uh, the Germans and the Jewish people and the Irish people teamed together and freed the black slaves through the Underground Railroad, through the Quaker and the Lutheran and the Friends Church, you know. So there was some liberalness going in the deep south way in the darkness of slavery. <laughs> we had some, uh, some great adventures in the south and on the road. Yeah, I, I was in the south. Uh, I did the Comic-Con in the south. And I was the only chocolate chip in the cookie. Everybody was Caucasian at the Comic Con. And uh, do, you, do you find that happens a lot? You're the only black person someplace. Yeah, I was the only chocolate chip in the cookie. And, How come? And, and 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 they had a they had a Donald Trump rally there. And you know, Donald Trump reminds me of my white cousin Scott Rexinger. Wherever he is, I wish him the best, and I'm so sorry that. Marty divorced him. He was a wonderful man and a wonderful person. And he used to invite me to his house uh, when Phyllis McKinnon was living for uh, 
um, Christmas and Thanksgiving dinner in Woodland Hills. He, he got converted to being a, a United Methodist like his wife, uh, Marty. I was so heartbroken to see that they got divorced. They were such a wonderful couple. He had, he had a good taste like me. He liked blonde women. He liked white women. He was white too. He liked vanilla milk more than chocolate milk, but each his own. So See, again here, I'm hearing your, your food uh, analogies for sex, and usually they're dairy products or sweets. Well, I don't know what's gotten in my mind, I guess. Uh, I think you want some sugar on your hamburger. Oh, uh, no, I like Coke. I like the real thing. I want yeah, a beautiful again, woman to be with. I look at women and very seldom look at guys. I'm really turned on to white women. I think they, are, they act feminine like a woman. Only ones that are different are Ellie Jenner's. I had a crush on Ellie Jenner's, and I, the only black woman I really had a, cross, a crush on was Wanda Sight. And I, I felt she was, she was, uh, until I had a dream about it. I had a dream, I asked Wanda side out and she punched me in the stomach and says, you better leave me and my lady alone. I said, well, I, I respect you for being gay. My sister in California, in, um, Germany's gay, she's married to a gay woman, teach his own, whatever rocks your boat. There's no other black women you're attracted to? Well, I was oh, crushed Houston. on Pam Greer back in the day in the 70s and she was very hot. And, and I have a crush on that beautiful black woman that played on the electric company that had a big afro. But I yeah. had have some black girls do some dirt on me. My goodness, uh, uh, this black girl, I, last black girl I dated with, she took my credit card and 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 over and and uh, hijacked it and ran it up higher than 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 the biggest m mountain in the uh, country. I said, that's the end up. No more black women, because I don't want them to take advantage of me anymore. Mount Even my McKinley. sister sold my mother's home at 117 Westwood Drive behind my back, and I was supposed to be on the estate, and her and my uncle did a job on me. I have to forgive them. I have to do like they say in Christian science. i got to wait and love more for every hate and fear. No ill since God is good and lost is gain, and help a, a new, new, uh, I got also cheated out of the, uh, apartment and uh, on Sycamore Street, you know. Winford got all eight buildings and gave me uh, $2,000 to move out, but you know, my day will come when I own my own property. I won't have to rent. I wish them the best. I bless them and release them and wish them the best. That's one thing I like. They say uh, they have a saying in that spinoff from, uh, from Christian Science. They say you got to bless them and release them. Christian Science had more spinoffs than Happy Days in All in the Family. They had um, Laverne and Shirley as the Church of Better Living, Religious Science, Ernest Holmes, and then Charles and Myrtle Fillmore um, had another spinoff, Mark and Mindy, uh, uh, Unity, Charles and Myrtle Fillmore. What about Joni Los Chachi? Huh? What about Joni Los Chachi? Joni Los Chachi would be Divine Science that was a spinoff. That was Ebba, Ebba Hopman's. Hopkins, who, who broke away from Christian Science and did her own thing, and then um, and they they tried they give all the credit to Quimby, but Mrs. Eddy had her own ideas before Quimby. You know, she learned some ideas, but she she had her own ideas before Quimby. She was she was a unique person. She was a li a liberal. She let all her slaves go in the South, and and uh, she was a, a liberal liberal lady. But the people that are attracted to Christian Scientists are mostly. Donald Trump Republicans, very conservative people, very conservative. You know, I like Donald Trump, some of his ideas. I, the idea I like that he cares about the veterans and, and, and that he wants to uh, make America great. We need America to be great with all this. He needs to get these, they, they, you know, I voted for the prop, I don't know what proposition was, but I voted for the homeless people to get fair housing. And I was, and, and I still see homeless people on the street. I, when I have extra money, I give it to them or give them food vouchers. So I got, assault, uh, I got attacked by a homeless woman on the subway uh, on the blue line. It was really weird. Um, I, gave her, I gave her a McDonald voucher and she punched me in the face and says, I want money. You're a cheapo. Uh, I want money so I can buy my Budweiser beer. I says, I don't want to support your bad habit. So she punched me in the stomach. <laughs> And everything's on camera on the bus and the trains, and the sheriff didn't do a damn thing. He says, "Well, it's Christmas; you should forgive her. It's Jesus Day." 
So you had to for, you had to bless her and release her. Yes, I did. That's. Uh, that's hey, you got a new girlfriend in your life from Canada. She's See, not. She has a sister for me. Um. Well, she does have a sister, but I don't know if you guys would quite hit it off. She does like musicians, though. So. Huh. She she does. My girlfriend's sister does like musicians. Oh well, I'm a musician. So. I'm the I'm the music, and she's the lyrics. We can hit it off fine. Give her my number anyway. I will. I treat her fine. I tr I'll be kind to her. Do you like to once you give out the number? Do you like to let the woman make the first move? Who's calling us? I don't know. I think that's your phone. Who's calling us? I don't know. Who's calling us? Oh my goodness, this must be my new cell phone. How many cell phones do you have these days? Uh, who's calling me? Who is it? Hello? David. It's Hello? Hello, I'm doing a show. Can you call me back? Hello? Hello? Does that uh, phone not have a, a voicemail? This is like, this should call, be called the Phil Shy phone. This phone should become shy and not call me all the time. Let me put it to sleep. Yeah. Uh, power off. Yes, I put it to sleep. Who do you think, it's pretty late. Who do you think that was? Oh, it was my uh, booking manager. Do you? Jewy, chewy, Jewish, Jewish booking manager, no emotion. Wait, why do you have two cell phones? <laughs> well, if the other one gets lonely, it has company. That doesn't make any sense. Well, this is for long distance phone calls and this is for local phone calls. All the phone calls cost the same amount of money on a cell phone. Well, Horizon has a deal, you can get two so the other one won't be lonely. <laughs> That's the not why. Cell phones are the way they give you two phones. There's yet yeah, there's a song about having two phones. There is. It's called. <laughs> that kind of attention. It's one for the women and one for the. Well, one must bros. Be, one of the phone so. must be a girl and a guy. I get them. I get them to make out sometimes. So I, if I don't have to look at porn, I'm just teasing you. Is that what you're doing right now? No, I'm gonna put this phone to sleep too. Uh, they got Do you ever? Talk to me after the interview. Do you ever have the phones call each other? I did when one of my phones got stolen during Christmas time, and uh, I, uh, I, I, just, I, I don't want to see this guy watching, but there was a guy that uh, Jonah had me to take the Greyhound bus, and instead of the, um, the, uh, uh, he had me take the Greyhound bus, and I, and, I, and, and Greyhound is not like, um, like uh, that other competition with the other one. Mega bus. It's not like make a bus. You have to buy the ticket at the station. You can't, they don't accept the ticket that you get online. And I explained this to Joan Emotion, but he didn't listen to me. And now this big ghetto black woman says, you ain't catching the bus until you pay a motherfucking fare over again. And say, you, you, he says, Greyhound, it's Christmas time. You old Greyhound, a uh, Christmas gift. I'm making you pay twice to make it nice. So uh, she said, I ain't going to let you get on the Greyhound bus. Now I'm the manager downtown at 7th Street till you can pay up another fare. Because we don't take tickets from the internet. you got to buy a ticket directly at the bus stop. So she, she was so mean to me, I thought she was sitting on me. She was so fat and big. So I had to buy another ticket. By the time I bought another ticket and argued with her, the bus was gone. That ticket the next day. Oh, man. And then when I was taking the bus, this guy was eyeing me and says, you have a good looking backpack. It reminds me of a girl I used to date. It really looks good. The backpack reminds him of a girl? He used to date, he must have dated a big fat whopper girl. Well anyway, um, I, he cut a hole in my bag and I had to replace two of my credit cards, two, uh -huh. two of my Citibank card and I had to replace my phone. He, he hijacked them both, he says, he says, I'm like JJ, I like to just borrow things from good times. He borrowed them and I never saw them again. Oh, was that what he was known he for? Says, I, 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 I like to borrow things. I like to find things, man. He found us. But luckily, I, 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 the next day, I, put a, uh, I called up Citibank and put a stop on a credit card. So he didn't you still, you still go to the bank a lot? Oh, wow. Yeah, tell me something about you. You always asked about me. It's, I'm interviewing you. What do you want to know? Why are you sensitive about you going to the bank? You always asked about me. 
about me, you know. I never get get anything about you. Well, I'm. I had a dream that you and I became the Rat Pack. Me, you, and uh, and since you're Italian and I'm African American, like Sam Davis Jr., Italian like Frank Sinatra, I would love Frank Sinatra. Uh, did I tell you an experience about meeting Frank Sinatra in person? Uh, at the Hollywood Bowl? Yeah, you remember the story, or? Well, like I remember it, but I don't know if all the viewers have heard it. Okay, I do busting at the uh, Hollywood Bowl and the Music Center. Uh, it's, it's so expensive living in Los Angeles. And I was busting in the 1980s at the, um, uh, Danny Kaye used to come by and tip me, and Ella Fitzgerald used to tip me $50, and Danny Kaye, the one who was performing there, and nothing used to tip me a $100 bill, and one time Frank Sinatra came, and he tipped me five $100 bills. He said, I wonder where this beautiful voice is coming from. He stopped his Rolls Royce and said, it's coming from you. And told me, you own this buddy. He said, you know who I am. I says, who? He says, you remind me of my best friend, Sammy Davis Jr. I says, uh, I'm Frank Sinatra, and I like to do music to perfection, to perfection, perfectly. And I like the way you sing the notes, not flat, but on tune professionally. He says, here's $500. I'm doing the last, last Rock Pack show at the Greek Theater and I want you to be my guest there. Jerry Lewis is going to be there, and um, Sammy Davis Jr. was living at the time, is going to be there. And so he says, I just want you to meet Sammy Davis Jr. The only thing you don't do that Sammy Davis Jr. does is because you, hey, you don't tap dance like Sammy Davis Jr. does. I need him to teach you to tap dance. So Sammy Davis, so I, um, uh, Frank Sinatra had a big, limousine to pick me up at the, um, my cousin Phyllis McKinnon's place on Sycamore Street uh, when I used to live there in the Fairfax area. And then he took me to the Greek theater. He said, I want you to meet this fantastic singer. He reminds me of you. He used to be a street musician like, like you used to be. This is David Lieberhart meet Sammy Davis Jr. I'm going to be the only damn Sammy Davis Jr. I don't need no competition. He tore up my resume and tap danced on it and gave me the middle finger. He says, you're not going to take my territory from me as an actor and a tap dancer. I, and, and I just, I was shocked. I thought, you know, since he's African American like me, I thought that he would, uh, would, would help me out, but he resisted me like a beautiful girl that thought she was too good to date me. I wouldn't date him. I just wanted him to help me with my career. How long did he tap dance on it? He tap danced on it about for about ten seconds, and he tore it up, and and, and, and so many fine places. And he told me, um, and so I was so embarrassed. Uh, so uh, Frank Sinatra said to me, you know, I know what happened to you was pretty shitty, and I'm going to give Sammy Davis Jr. a good talk, and but you're welcome to come to my studio uh, on Sunset. Uh, Frank Sinatra used to own a studio on Sunset Hollywood. And, gave me a tour of that, and he bought me a very expensive, good Italian uh, meal. And he apologized for what uh, Sammy Davis Jr. did. That's nice of him. He sounds like a great guy. He, I love Frank Sinatra. He is the best musician, the best actor. He had class. He I'm was sorry. one of my... You got to your mic. Oh, we're having some audio problems right now. Oh, my goodness. It's like a it's girl right. that doesn't want to date me. Playing oh. hard to get. The audio is playing hard to get? Mike doesn't want to speak. The, uh, Here, let me see your, I, gotta, I don't want to read down your hoo-ha. Oh my goodness. Where's man. your mic, microphone, dude? I wouldn't mind it. <laughs> Let you know I'm not a guy. Yeah. There we yeah. go. Wow, you got a lot of stuff with oh, you no, I here. I was going to get lucky the hard way. Oh yeah, it oh, turned red. off. My goodness, it's, it, 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 it's, 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 it's green. Okay, yeah, it's well green. he's back. Here we go, okay. Just, yeah, it's just, go. yeah. You don't need to, you can just down. leave it on here. Five minutes. Okay. Well, tell me about you. You're telling me you're working at two museums now? Just one museum. And you got yeah. a beautiful woman in your life? I My God. You know, I'm going to tell you, I was jealous, Jelly, of you because when I used to tour with you, you always got your girl like, uh, like that guy had always got his mouse. I mean, you got laid by some fine white girls when we toured together. And I was jealous of you and feel shy. I said, my goodness, you got to teach me your finesse. My goodness, everywhere we toured, 
man, you bang those girls and you got all that sweet white sugar. Goodness gracious, you lucky little devil, you. Sometimes uh, I admire that about you. you oh, know, you got thank a beautiful you. girlfriend. Well, yeah, it was really uh, not not as uh, plentiful as you make it sound. Well, you'd be lonely by yourself. Yeah. Uh, I still have my trains and my fish, but it's not like having a woman. Yeah, it's kind I'm, of, I'm, it's I'm pretty close. I'm the peanut butter that needs to, that to have the jelly of a beautiful woman in my life. Uh, I, I love, I love women. They're, I wrote a song called Beautiful Women Make, Make the Guys. I mean, it. I love women, women. They bring children to the world. They bring so much joy to a man. They say men live longer when they have a woman in their life and they live much happier. And I just hope that uh, I can find a nice, young, beautiful Caucasian, Asian, or Hispanic. I do like women that are dark, but they've got to be from Africa, not African-American women, because African-American women have been so mean to me. You know, I was mistreated by Oprah Winfrey's staff. Let me tell you what happened. Oprah Winfrey said that she wanted to, on nationally, that she wanted to help young talent out. So I found out her studio was in West Hollywood. I mailed her a picture and resume, and it was mailed back to me, returned to the sender. I had to pay for the return postage. And then I opened up the letter so I could mail the, the resume to another company. She wrote a, a, a note was written in there by one of her staff members or her. I don't take unsolicited material from unknown peons. I was so hurt, and after that, Oprah Winfrey broke my heart, and that was said, no more. I'm through with black women, and I used to love Oprah Winfrey, but when she did that, when her staff did that to me, and then she, her, her company wrote a letter to Screen Actors Guild and said that we want all the production companies in Hollywood to, 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 that we don't take unsolicited material, not unless you have a lawyer or a talent agent uh, escort you, and I felt that was pretty cold. How are the aliens doing? Aliens have not been, Joan, you and Jonah have something in common. You don't believe. I believe in aliens. No, you and Jonah insulted the aliens, so they don't call me anymore. Well, I believe in interdimensional. Well, you do now, but when I put them on the phone, you said, oh, there's no aliens calling you. Those are just regular fans trying to play that they're being aliens. You said that to Quitzel Boy, and he, was really, he really got angry with me, and he quit calling me. You said that to, uh, to Laurent, and he quit calling me. And then uh, I got a call from, um, from another alien with Jonah Motion. He said, it, 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 Mel Drummond called Jonah Motion. I said, Jonah Motion, I got... I got this old Megan on the phone, and he's from Star Caladan, and he and he uh, and he put him on. Oh, he's not an he's not an alien. He's no more an alien than Hitler's still living against the Jews, and and I'm Jewish. He's no more an alien than 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 than, um, than, uh, than, than Red Skelton is a, is, is a Jew is a Jew. How did you first become familiar with the Corinthians? Did you, had you heard about them and then you met them? No, 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 no. This is a, this is, I can't talk about aliens with Donald Trump in office. I, he, yeah, he whooped my ass. Is he going to persecute? He's a very strong Republican. I'll just put this way. If you want to learn about aliens, go to two things. Go to MUFON, go on the internet before they clean, before they block it all from the, take it off from the red. And as, as my grandmother Schroeder would say, I don't want to get in a heap of trouble. So, uh, it, like, like, like um, the guy says on a Hogan Zero, I know nothing. But I can tell you that aliens do exist just like we do. And Donald Trump is against aliens? You know, no, well, Republicans uh, don't ask, don't tell, you know. They don't, they feel that's classified. You know, Hillary Clinton got almost in trouble for talking too much on the phone. I don't want to get in a heap of trouble. She like was going to release, she was going to unclassify a lot of your I posting. know, and she, but you know, she would have gotten, as my grandmother Schroeder would say, she'd get in a heap of trouble. I love her. I love Hillary Clinton. I love some of the views of the Democrats, and I love some of the views of the Republicans, even though, you know, and I like Bernie Sanders. I'm sorry he didn't win. What did you like about Bernie? He was cool. He was liberal. He was the best Jewish man I felt to ever walk the road. He was very liberal. He wanted to make this country a better place. He cared about the poor people. He cared about the middle class. He cared about the minorities. 
And you know, Jewish people faced a lot of racism like blacks, so he cared about poor people. That sounds a lot like you. Have you ever thought about running for office? Uh, I have my hands full trying to break, break, get back into the entertainment business. I think you are in the entertainment business. Well, I am. I'm on TV with you. I'm, I'm, I'm on TV with... Uh, with You're on uh, the road? Uh, well, the road is just... Shona Motion made me spend all the money on this Australia trip. For the last three tours I did, I, I could, didn't get any money from them. Everything had to go for the plane for an Australia trip. And everything that sold on the internet had to go on the Australia trip. I didn't think that was fair because I needed money to pay bills. Do you, uh, you like going back to Australia? Don't I wish him. He's a nice young but you know, like you. But he's, he's a nice young and like you. Do you like Australia? I love Australia, but I didn't think it was right that when we went to Australia soccer. together, we both didn't get paid. Yeah. And we still didn't get paid. And I found out they were connected up with Hillsong United. Yeah. Hey, yeah. Uh, pull your thing down a little bit. There we go. Oh, wow. Because your beard was, because you're too manly. He says you're manly. Have you ever been called that before, David? Oh, now thank you. you. I like Coke. I like the real thing. I like women. Like, yeah. like, 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 you know, even though I, I, I'm a nun, not getting none, I still like them. Who doesn't like women? Oh, women are so beautiful and precious. I, I'm glad God created women. Who's your favorite woman of all time? Oh, my God. I love women. Oh, boy. I had a crush on Clarice Reachman. I still feel she looks sexy at 90 years old. And I love Cloris Reachman. When I used to see her on the Mary Tyler Moore show, I first saw her on Bonanza. I just had the hots for Cloris Reachman. She reminded me of my ex-girlfriend, Sonia Root. I, and, I, and I was so hurt when I saw her at 90 years old in a, in a wheelchair. She is just, she still looked hot to trot. I love Cloris Reachman. And if Cloris Reachman, if you hear, hear where you are, where I know you live in the Valley, I feel you're the most attractive, talented, white actress next to uh, that girl, Marlo Thomas. Oh, and, yeah. And, and, and Donahue, you need to get on your knees and thank God that you have such a beautiful white, white rose like, um, like a, a Marlo Thomas. And Cloris Reachman, wherever you are, I love you. I admire you. You are my favorite woman uh, next to Raquel Welsh. You and Raquel Welsh are... Are, 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 are top 10 on my, uh, my, my list for women. I love Cloris Reachman. And I wish you would have kept your hair long. When you cut your hair short, you, you kind of like, look like um, Lady Elaine from, uh, from, um, from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. I used to have a crush on Lady, uh, Lady Elaine. You know, I thought she was the sexiest puppet. I had a crush on Lady Elaine from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. When she had long hair, she looked sexy. If you she could be my punch and I'll be her Judy. I love Lady Elaine. I wrote a song about Lady Elaine. Lady Elaine, you're a cool dame. Lady Elaine, you use a boomerang. Lady Elaine, I'm in love with you. You're just a puppet, but I love you too. Lady Elaine, Lady Elaine, I don't give you no blame. Lady Elaine, you're just a puppet. Lady Elaine, I love you. Lady Elaine, do the boomerang. I want to fall in love with you. You're a pretty dame. I love Lady Elaine. That was a great song, David. I love Lady Elaine wherever I, you are a real person. You know, I went, when I toured, uh, I, I, Mr. Rogers' uh, neighborhood's puppets are at the Children's Museum in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And there I saw Lady Elaine, and she was all in a glass cover. If she was in a class cover, I would kiss her. She is such a beautiful puppet. That was a great song that you did. Yeah, and you. Uh, you know, we've done a hundred of, of these. And that was the first time anyone's ever broken out into song. You seem like you have this need to perform, to be artistic. Have you I always been that way? I love being artistic. Oh, I love the train in back of me. That's cool. That kind of distracted you, huh? Oh, that's cool. You know how much I love trains. Trains remind me of pretty dames. You know, trains are romantic. Their couplers are like holding hands with another, holding hands with a girl and a guy holding hands together. The way trains couple up together. And it's like trains kiss each other when they're hooked up together. Trains are so romantic. 
I but like to be the diesel. There, to but do see, a they're coupled at freight cars. They're coupled at both ends, though. Yeah, they. Uh, kind of like bisexual. No, those are heterosexuals. But, okay. But you know, I can say. Well, if it was a passenger and freight train hooked up, then that would be bisexual. Are there any trains that do both? I love the North Shore. It was my first love. I used to see the Chicago North Shore and Milwaukee Railroad and the Electroliner are my first love. What do you like better, trains or women? Well, if I had a chance between trains and women, I'd choose women. Uh, what if... I like women that have beautiful big pyramids. What do you I think? Love, I love, I feel those tits, or tits are so sexy. Uh, something is just so sexy about tits, they're just, that women have that we don't have. And they're, and they're, and they're, and their skin is soft like a, like a, like a nice, soft, fresh thing of, of, of baked bread. I mean, I just, I love, I just, I got it. Oh my God. You so, so you're a pretty amorous guy, David. Uh, when you were a teenager, because you're, you're an older guy and you still seem like you were very passionate. When you were a teenager, were you even more horny than you are now? Corny, horny, horny. I used to be very horny uh, thinking about being with a woman and I had strict parents and they washed my mouth out with soap if they saw me say a naughty thing. They were strict in the 50s and the 60s. Kids get away with anything now. When I was growing up in the 50s, if you said a bad word or talked back to your parents, you got slapped in the face or, or they, 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 they really warmed your buns. They <laughs> paddled you good, made your buns uh, get, get, a, get, get a dye of being red. Did you, do you think it was better when things were more disciplined back in the 50s and 60s? Well, I feel we need more discipline in our country. My goodness, I can't go back to Chicago, to my old neighborhood. There's so many gun shooting going on down there in, in, in Inglewood and in Chicago, where I, the south side where I grew up. My goodness, uh, ooh. Uh, it's a nice place to visit like New York, but I wouldn't want to live there. Too many guns, too many people getting killed there. What do you think is the solution to the gun problem? Well, I feel that the, the Army or the Navy or the sheriffs or the FBI need to go in there and shoot up those gang members until they kill them out completely because they're, they don't, they're, you know, not, so many innocent people are being killed on the street. I lost 66 members of my family that got killed by gang members. And now these gangs have moved not just to Chicago, they moved all the way to Chicago Heights, Harvey, Illinois, all the way down to Salt Trail and Park Forest, Illinois. The gangs have just taken over even the nice areas, suburban so, areas. So, so David, we're almost out of time, but I did want to ask you, uh, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this or not, but you know you have all this music out there and this comedy, and you're on TV and stuff. People regularly, I've heard them say that you are a genius. You're an artistic genius in well, the way that you. Well, thank you. I am. I just wish I, I just wish the people. I wish they tell the people that like me as a fan, write to the new odd couple and ask them why they didn't uh, keep their promise and hire me to be on there. Ask them to write to New Girl why they didn't follow through and put me on the show as they promised. They told me they wanted me to be, they said they liked me on the Tim and Eric Awesome Show, great job, you're it, we're gonna hire you to be on the new odd couple, and then next I knew uh, this other guy, well I'm happy for his success, got on there instead of me, and they promised the job to me. David Lee Bahar, thank you for being on the well, show. Well, as my grandmother Schroeder would say, Don Kishin, Dankeschön, and Dankeschön to all of you for uh, watching. Thank you for letting me be on your show. Until next we're time. We're still friends. Even though we've had uh, rough, good times and bad times together, we're still friends. That's what a friend is. They're together. Yeah. Oh, together. One last thing before we go. Yeah. My best friend, Joe McMillan, dumped me. Joe McMillan and I went Shh. back. Talk softer. High school days. Grammar school days. He works at UPS. He said, because you didn't vote for who I voted for, motherfucker, don't ever call me again. Or oh, I have my brother who's a, sh who's a uh, high up lawyer sue the shit off your pants and clothes and make you naked. And I hurt. So I still love Joe McMillan, but 
You know, I have to let him go like my ex-wife, Bridget, and wish him the best. Bless him and release him. Until next time, this is Adam Papp again reminding you that there's a place Speak you out can a go, whisper, don't speak out anger. And it's your mind. Speak. Good night. <laughs> yes, Joan Emotion's calling me up. Why are you on this show, you know? You're working with me. Uh, that's, uh, well, you can't win them all. Yeah. Uh,